Good. I'm great. That's what I thought. Hello, I'm Austin Harrison, and I am the head of games at IV. And today I am joined by Zach Dixon, who is our executive creative director at IV. It's me. And one of the Hello. founders. And by Max Anderson, who is the technical director at IV. And hey guys. we are here to bring you IV Games Weekly. Um, and I'm really excited about this because it's a chance for us to take conversations that we would be normally having anyway and put them in a format that other people can join. Yeah. Yeah, so when Moonrakers kind of kicked off, we got this huge community and we started talking to them daily on Discord. And we talked about games that we're backing, we talked about what we're playing, we talked about all kinds of different things, but it was only on Discord. And so I, I feel like this gives us a chance to kind of take it to a bigger audience. Yeah, definitely. And that, and that community is, is maybe a bit fragmented. It's all over, you know, we got people on Facebook and Instagram yeah. and Twitter, but, you know, a lot of that conversation happens in the Discord, but... Um, yeah, this is kind of a way for us to talk and this can be like a, a, a launching off place for further conversation outside of the show or in the comments of the show, whatever. Um, yeah, Ivy Games Weekly. Hopefully yeah. we'll be doing it weekly because that's in the name of the show. <laughs> it's, it's the name. So we, we have to now. We better do it weekly. now. Oh, goodness. Well, right now this is pre-recorded, uh, but our plan is to live stream these so that we can have even more engagement from the community. And that'll take the form of comments and just engagement there. But we also want to even have people be guests on the show from the community and to talk to us like Max is right now. Um, but beyond that, uh, we're just three white guys right now, and we'd love to have more diversity as well. And we could use your help in finding voices from the broader community. To, to engage with and have as guests. Yeah, but it, we'll also be doing that work as well yeah. um, to just try and amplify voices and people who don't just look like us um, and, and bring, um, yeah, just just different, more diverse perspectives into this this conversation as well too. Um, so you can be looking, looking for that in the future. Yeah, this will definitely be a revolving cast. We'll have different combinations of people on our staff up here and we'll also have faces from around the board gaming community that you'll recognize, I hope, so. Yeah, really excited about that. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about a few different special topics. Uh, the first is games you should play during quarantine, uh, which yeah. is Zach's idea here. So excited about that. Um, and then we're going to be talking about games that we're excited about that are on Kickstarter. And then finally, we'll be talking about uh, just an update from our studio in general, the status of Moonrakers, what else we're doing. Uh, but yeah, excited yeah. to jump in. And, and that's a segment that we'll, I think, do pretty regularly. Um, Ivy games is a part of a, a a larger company slightly larger called ivy studio um, and we do a bunch of different things uh, one of those main things is uh, commercial animation for clients um, and so um, we'll this will be kind of a chance for us to to give you a look into some of the other things that we're doing outside of just uh, board games yeah. uh, for example we we make video games sometimes we um, do commercial projects for clients like Nike which we'll talk a little bit about today um, and we're also trying to make a uh, television show uh, so we'll give you regular updates on, on kind of the other things in the the IV universe all right <clears throat> nope bad start <laughs> you said one word all right <laughs> is a bad starting word let's talk about your special topic this week Zach what do you got for us? All right. So, you know, it's been a, what, what do people say? It's been an interesting time, a strange time. Challenging, really? unprecedented times. Uh, yeah, the unprecedented times. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, we, we've been in quarantine and we haven't been able to kind of gather our uh, regular, you know, weekly board game group, right? It's because of, sad. you know, social distancing yep. and, and uh, all that. So uh, we've been confined to our homes and um you know my my wife enjoys the occasional board game but you know yep. she's uh, you know not as interested necessarily in like the gloom havens or the you know twilight imperiums and things like that yeah, are, but she are loves kind of usual but she loves space games what did you say max so it's a tough ask it, it really oh. is no, and, that's, <laughs> and that's completely understandable so i thought like um i asked both of you like bring some games that you've been um kind of playing with your your quarantine partners or your, your housemates which aren't necessarily our regular board game group um, yeah. and I think that's a pretty particular uh, type of game right because um, you know we, we all love board games and so there's a certain weight that we like to hit in and in, in certain yeah. expectations we have for games that we do like to play um, but what do you bring to the table when it's maybe somebody who isn't a part of that like kind of hardcore board game group that you're with um, you know that plays in those low player counts that um, uh, you know, doesn't have, you know, isn't too long, 
but also has like some weight to it. Some it's actually interesting and and um, something that you know you want to bring to the table. So um, I brought I brought th- uh, a couple different games. I actually brought three, and uh, my two of them are up here. I'll start with the one that isn't up there. Broke your um, own rule. Also, I'm not, I will I won't lie. Uh, Max, show me all these games. So. <laughs> So they're really Pray all max credits do. Yeah, I mean. Thank you, Zach. You're welcome. You know, I mean, if I needed a game, I'm just like, Max, what do you got for me? And uh, and all the ones I just force on you over and over again until you play them. I know. I ask I ask Austin for game recommendations. He just gives me Star Wars games. So They're not the same all one. Star Wars. It's just the exact same one over and over again. Rebellion. Rebellion. He's Rebellion. only played it once with me, okay? <laughs> well, yeah, you're Sorry, right. I'm, I'm a terrible friend. And it was um, the four-player version, which is it was the four-player version. Uh, but anyways, all right. So my my first thing this is the the thing that uh, the game that Mo I found I played most recently. It's called uh, Fugitive um, with Harrison Ford. With Harrison Ford. No, sadly, Harrison Ford is not in this box. <laughs> um, but no, it's like uh, would you say it's like asymmetrical? Yeah. Max? Yeah. yeah it's it's kind of this. It's got that offense. You know, somebody's playing offense. Somebody's playing defense, which is nice because then you can switch it up depending upon. Um, you know, different when you play it the next time, somebody can be the fugitive and someone can be the marshal, and you can flip it. And it's a very different game depending upon which side you're playing. Uh, but basically, you're you're moving from hideout to hideout. It's a card based game. Uh, it's got a little you know marker to keep track of where you are or like where you think they are if you're the marshal. Um, yeah, and it's pretty fun. It's it's like ten minutes long, um, but I don't know. Really, really makes me think, uh, which I really enjoy. Sounds so, a lot like Clue. It's. It's not clue though. <laughs> no one is being murdered. Okay. Oh. It's not violent. Oh. They're just gonna put him in jail. Okay. Yeah. Why is Clue a good kids game? Someone's been murdered. I don't know. It's very, yeah. very common in my childhood though. Yeah. Do you know outside of the U.S. it's Cluedo? No. Like Play-Doh? Cluedo. Like, yeah, just D-O at the end of it. Cluedo. Are the pieces made out of Play-Doh? When I was in England, they had it at a bar. It was just called Cluedo. Same ah. game, different name. I kind of like it better. I, I don't. You don't? No, you should you should avoid ever calling it Cluedo again, Max. Wow, that's pretty insensitive. A lot of people, <laughs> yeah, would that's, disagree with Yeah, you. a lot of people would. Most people probably. Probably. That's true. Yeah. It's un, uncultured Americans over here. Hey. Um, all right, next one up, Jai Per. Uh, great two-player game. Uh, you play as two merchants uh, kind of battling against each other to, what is it? I mean... Not get the most camels. What are you trying to do? Just get the most money at the end of the game? I'm trying to think. Yeah, just perform the best yeah, at the market. Yeah, perform the best in the market. So there's um, different uh, materials that kind of show up in the marketplace, uh, and you're trying to, um, yeah, I don't know, become the best merchant. And uh, it's... Sounds good to me. I don't know. It's really fun. It's it, Again, it's got that kind of shorter player count, um, or not sh- shorter run time. Uh, probably shorter a, player count is great for me. Shorter player count. Nice. I'm short. Yeah. You can't We won't make I'm him stand down. up, but he's very insensitive about it. It's fine. You must be well, this tall. I'm very you. insensitive to you about me being short. No, no, no. About, about your, no. You, you, just, you, you should keep going. I'll keep going. We don't want um, to. I don't know. You introduced me to Jaiper, Max. Do you still play it? Oh, all the time. Yeah. It's one of my favorite games. Yeah. It just, it's so small and still so good mm-hmm. that, and it plays on a pretty small like table too, which is always helpful yeah no that's nice i i introduced it to a a friend of mine and he texted me a picture of him and his wife playing it on a plane oh wow not in in like coach not coach what it's not it's not a thing business class business class excuse me yeah Um, coach is much better i think wait no it's coach where the chickens are wait i thought coach is coach is not a thing anymore let's just keep it's a thing (laughs) okay I don't know. I'm getting nods from off it's camera been, it's that been, we should keep It's been going. forever since we've flown. I don't even yeah, remember no one, what it's no like. No one remembers that. Um, all right, last game, uh, Battle Line, also a card game. Um, it's uh, th- And there's another game that's identical. I don't know which one came first. Which What is this? What is the, the game that's identical to it called? Make him say it, Max. Sh- don't say Shot it. And totten. Shot Scott and Totten. Totten. Scott, Scott and Totten. Scott and Totten. Scott, Scott um, Scottish. Just a different theme, exact same game and rules. Um, they don't have the little tokens though. Little oh, they don't. Pawns. The little pawns. It's like cards. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Um, yeah. So basically, it's a it's a uh, a war themed game, kind of around like Alexander the Great times. Um, 
and there are nine different battles that you're kind of fighting simultaneously in this war. And you're playing down cards one at a time against each other. And it's essentially three cards go. You play three sides on your three cards on your side. They play three sides cards on their side. And whichever has the best hand wins that battle. Um, and you're playing kind of like poker rules. It's like three of a kind or flush or straight flush. Um, yeah, it really uh, hurts my brain a little bit to play. And um, Sarah beats me at it a lot. So, so she enjoys it. Um, yeah, it's really fun. What I like about it is you have to strategically lose some battles. Like there's just some battles mm -hmm. you're like, I'm not going to win that one. And yep. you have to kind of like focus on other ones and, and make up the difference. Well, yeah, and try and get other people to like waste maybe some cards. Oh, that, yeah. that you don't want to let them know you're, you're yep. going to lose it. Um, so there's a little bit of kind of bluffing in that sense. Yep. So it's, it's, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. I waste my cards everywhere in that game. I have no strategy. <laughs> I just, just play try for everything. Just throwing down random cards. Time. Uh, I'm sorry. It's okay. We're going to play that when you come visit Nashville next. Yeah. You love those games. I do. Where you can just easily beat me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's most games. It's the whole but, classification you know. of games. Games I can beat Max in. No, it's not. Speaking of Max. Max, what are your what are your quarantine games? All right, so I'm gonna paint a picture for you. Ooh, please. You're with your partner and you want to play chess. Yep. And they deny because they always have and they always will <laughs> to play chess with you. This is a reality for me. <laughs> it really is. And then you bring out Onitama. Mmm. Which sounds and like, then they're like, I like it. That's not chess. I'll play it. <laughs> and you'll know that at the end of the day, it's basically chess. <laughs> but it's 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 still got some fresh stuff. It looks it looks smaller and less intimidating. There's less pieces, right? The, the moves only five pieces. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and instead of like each piece having its own move system, the move systems are on cards, and so you're just picking each turn nice. which move you want to do with something, and it just it feels much more compact yeah. and concise, but also like a really fun twist on chess. That's great. And We've been playing it all the time because it's fast and it's got like each game will play differently because the new cards are drawn each time, so your move sets are different. Nice, yeah, big fan. Um, it, I was gonna say like one of, one of the things that is tough about playing chess is I feel like it takes one so much practice um, to actually be good at it, and then also it's like there's the decision paralysis, right? I mean, yep. I feel like every time you play a game of chess, it's like it wouldn't take so long. Like maybe you played a timed game, but then that's extremely difficult. And but there's just, yeah, there's, the, there's so many the possible moves. Game? Oh, like a five minute game. I don't no, know. Uh, there's whatever. There's sh yeah. There's shorter games than that. I just never choose yeah, it's to like play less it. Less than a minute. Yeah. It's crazy. That is crazy. They're called blitz games or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. But I, it seems like this like solves that problem of that decision paralysis where you just, you just sit there for, you know, 15 minutes trying to think of your next move because you know, one wrong, one wrong move in chess, the game's over. Yep. Sometimes. Yeah. And it's those moves where I'll sit there for the longest time, move it. And then someone does a move right back and it's like, <laughs> brilliant. There was my mistake. Yep. Like I overthought it. Yep. I overthought it and I put myself in checkmate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Every time. Uh, second game called flam rouge. See that? Oh, it's way bigger than I was expecting it to be. It's a big game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's got to fit all those pieces because you're building out a little track for your for your bikers. Oh, very nice. And they're going to bicyclists, I guess. Cyclists. Cy cyclists. Bi cyclists. Cyclists. Oh. Cyclists. Yeah. 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 Cyclists. And uh, you got a sprinter and a guy hanging back to draft uh, behind people. And you're just trying to time out your cards you're like have a limited number of cards you get fatigue you're just trying to win That's this cool. race and it's uh we've been playing a lot when there's when we're able to get four of us it's been a really fun game um plays in probably under an hour nice and uh yeah but also been hitting the table quite a bit the play at two new and fresh plays at two two to four okay um it i think it'll it'll play pretty well at two all right the first thing I noticed... That's, that's my opinion without having done it. <laughs> the nice. first thing I, I stand noticed, by it. Oh, sorry. The first thing I noticed about the box is the number of awards that are on it. The whole side of the box is oh, just wow. plastered with awards. Where do we get those? 
Um, I think we pay people for them. I don't, I no. don't quite know. Wow, that's a, that's a hot take. <laughs> <I'm just joking. laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. The second thing I noticed. I, no, they they earn those awards. I know. I was saying for us. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, we would have to pay. Yeah, that's yeah, the only way we're going to get any awards. We're going to we just got yeah. They earned theirs. Yeah, yeah. The second thing I noticed is the size of the bikers' noses. They're huge. It's a stylistic they help choice. You draft. Really gets the air breaks flow. the wind flow with the sharpness of your nose. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that makes sense. Also, they all seem like they have milk bottles on their bikes, but I think they're just water bottles. Or whiskey bottles. I don't know. Sounds they great. They do look like those old milk bottles, though. They yeah. do. All right. Moving on from that. What uh, you got, Austin? Those are, good, got Austin? those are good games, Max. Thanks for, thanks for sharing. Um, all right. So this can be a slightly hot take because it's Zach's favorite game. Uh, Azul. I've ne- I, I, I don't like this game, and I say that without having ever played it. Yeah. I always am like, hey, That's Zach, let's play, let's play Hating Azul. Games. Never played <laughs> and Zach's like, let's not. Um, it just doesn't grab me, but but pitch me on it. What? Why right. should I play Azul? So, you like winning games. That's true. And you like playing games. Yeah. And if you play me. this game enough, yeah. you might win. Okay. Uh, no, <laughs> Azul is a great <laughs> tile drafting game. It's it's a little abstract, so I can see why it'd be hard to to understand without playing. But basically, there are piles of tiles out there that you can grab from and you are trying to make patterns on your board and so if you fill up rows you get points if you fill up columns you get points if you use uh a large number of a certain tile you can get points there's a lot of different ways to get points which is one of the reasons i like it you can go for different things than everybody else um and if you and another player are going for the exact same like pattern Mm -hmm. you're going to fight with them over those tokens which is fun the other fun thing is that you can stick people with tokens they don't need and I love that part because mm. I might take a token I don't need that they need just to play defense and stick them with three tokens they don't need. And those are negative points for them. Wow. So that's super fun. Play very aggressive. I don't deny it. Um, my wife likes this game. And so I get a lot of plays of it in. And she still beats me all the time um, because she's better at Azul than I am. Nice. It's just a fact at this point. Um, we yeah, have- I, don't, I don't play too many abstract games. And I think that might be what my aversion is. I've just, I don't think yeah, I've ever... I'll have to get you into it. Yeah. Do you, will, do you both play other abstract games? Because I don't think I've ever... Hmm. I don't think I've, say yes I don't own without any. knowing what they are. It just feels like I do. <laughs> Azul. It's just a feeling you have. I feel like I, I feel look at my collection. I'm the kind of person um, who plays abstract games. I mean, I am a grand... Oh, uh, what's that? Hive. The B game? Yeah. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is. I don't know. That's I don't know that one. So I'm a grand strategy gamer. That's like my go-to. But my wife will not play grand strategy games with me. And so I am open to trying anything she will play with me. And oftentimes I really like them. So yeah. yes, I'm an abstract gamer. Nice. Um, another game that she likes to play and usually beats me at, Eldorado. Uh, no association with the... Uh, wait. Eldorado Games. No association with Eldorado Games. They had the Age of mm-hmm. Atlantis game earlier. But... Uh, El Dorado, the Road to El Dorado is a racing game. You're trying to get to El Dorado before any other player. It is a deck building game and I love it. It is one of those games that you can pick up by playing because it's just moving tiles. And in order to move on a tile, you just play a card that matches the tile. So you can teach it in like 10 seconds. Um, but then you are buying games from a market and are buying games, buying cards from a market and the cards that you can buy do some really cool things. And then at two players, were you going to say something? Oh, no, no, keep going. At two players, you play each with two characters and both of them have to get to El Dorado before the other player. And I love that because it adds in this whole other mechanic of blocking people with your other player and like sprinting with your first player. And it's, it's super fun to kind of like think like we're the best roadblocks. I haven't um, played this yet, but I, I just love a good like lighter deck builder. Yep, it's um, definitely that. Kind of like, would you compare it to Splendor at all? Because that's kind of um, it's very different gameplay wise, but complexity, yes. Okay, nice. Yeah, because there's a, there's a time where we were just playing when we were making Moonrakers, which is a deck builder. Yep. We were just playing all all, all deck the deck builders. builders that we could get our hands on. Yep. And then we just ended up playing Dominion. We played really a lot of Dominion. <laughs> Zach, but, um, Zach owns too many Dominions. Ah, oh, that's so fun though. Like, I know, it's, it's the best part of the game. Yeah. Just, just I can show up at someone's house. Do you have? Yeah. With I can truck. just show up at someone's house with like, you know, they're, they're just like, what, what did I get myself into? Because I'm coming in with six boxes. Like, oh, this is just one game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're we're gonna play all of this at the same time. But really, it's just one deck from each box. Yeah. Well, I mean, you would never play that way. That's a terrible way to play. But have you played Eldorado, Max? No, I have not. Oh, actually. next time you come. Yeah. It's so good. Um, yeah, that's my games. That's we, all of our games. That's we we did it. We survived quarantine. Oh, the one thing though that you did not bring up though is in quarantine we did play 
a very obscure game called uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, we that did. Your, uh, Socially distanced. And my your, wife Your DM'd. wonderful wife DM'd yeah. for your birthday. She DM'd it? Yeah, yeah. she DM'd it. And yeah. she did good. Yeah, it was great. Sam tried to climb a bear. Sam's and off she camera was right like, there. Yeah. Um, and she was like, you can't do that. And he was like, I can try to do whatever I want. And she said, that's true. And then he rolled a natural 20. Yeah, and it was one of my favorite moments ever. But then amazing. he tried to jump off the bear's back into a third story window. And he rolled like a two. And yeah. that was also my was, favorite moment. I was, rolling so, I was rolling so terrible that night. Yeah, you had some really bad rolls. And I'm, you know, I'm also on like infant, uh, infant schedule. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah. it was getting pretty late and I was getting a little tired. But... Um, At it one was point, super fun. Zach was laying on the couch with his hood up <laughs> on Zoom, and we weren't sure he was awake. I, I stuck it out, though. He we, did great. We won. We did it. It was a blast. Zoom Zoom uh, RPGs. Anybody out there playing any Dungeons and, Dragons, Dungeons and Dragons over Dungeons Zoom? Dungeons and Dragons, yeah. It was good. It was a yeah, good, good quarantine oh, game. Oh, yeah. It yeah. Was, uh, we played a one-shot called Something Sheep. <laughs> Something Sheep. That was I don't what know. it was called? Oh, nice. It, you're looking for a sheep, and then you're trying to help it turn back into a wizard. It was great. Uh, Have you been doing any uh, quarantine uh, kind of virtual like call. virtual games at all, Max? Uh, what's that app that everyone's playing? Those different games. Tabletop, Tabletop simulator? simulator? No, like really light with your cell phone. There's like mm. uh, House Party. House Party, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's like games on that. Like we did those with a bunch of people early on. That's cool. Like trivia and stuff. Nothing, nice. nothing D&D like though. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. All yeah. right. Thanks for sharing, Zach. Good topic. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Let's talk about some new games that we're excited about. I am actually really excited about this first one we're going to talk about, uh, which is The Age of Atlantis. Um, so these guys were our neighbors at the first exposure playtest hall at uh, Gen Con. Nice. And I was not there. They were not showcasing this game. It was Eldorado Games, and they are they were showcasing Windward, which is delivering soon, and I'm very excited. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, but... Just from watching Windward be played and getting to check that out a little bit, I know this game's going to be great. Also, there's a Pegasus on the front, but I think it's metal. I don't think it's an actual Pegasus. It's metal? Like in? Does it come with a metal Pegasus? Because that would be dope. I think so. I think I'm misleading people. Maybe mm, it does. I don't know. There's just a big Poseidon at the at the center of the board. Yes, there is. And they are. It is growing as we speak. I don't think that's true. No. I think they maxed it out. No, I think it is. It's not like growing as we speak. It's just they're going to make it bigger for each social share. That no, no, no. it's growing as we speak. Okay. It, yeah, the more you the share about it, growing. yeah, yeah, it's growing right now as we, as we speak. That's what it, I'm sticking with it. No, um, go no with as you the more show, social shares uh, of the game itself, yes, uh, they will make it bigger every time somebody shares about it or every you know yes. x amount of people shares about it, which is awesome. So please go out there and share it because I want a bigger. Sp- Poseidon. I want a bigger side. Yeah, same. So. And we definitely bagged it, so I'm I'm very excited about that. But I I'm ex- I I love the the weight, the player count, the the time. Like it, it seems like it's it's I don't know. I feel like I could bring this to the table a lot yep. and bring it to the table with like tons of different people who are into games. Yep. You know, and, you know. You were talking about the rule book too. Or, yeah, and the rule book is only four pages, which is nuts. Brilliant. I would, you know, I wish we could could have gotten Moonraker's, <laughs> Moonraker's really whistle. small font. Um, <laughs> you would have needed magnifying glass. Yeah, no, but no, that's yeah, really impressive. Beat. Four yeah. pages is crazy. Yeah, four pages yeah. is nuts. Uh, yeah, Max, what do you think of this, about this one? I'm really excited about the board. I think the whole right side being dedicated to that, like where people are at with achievements yeah. and like visually seeing just through like color there. It's like, where are we at? Where's everyone, what has everyone done? And then how long have we gotten through this game for? It's like, yeah, it's really smart design. Yeah. I, and I love seeing that cause it's something I have not seen. And another thing I haven't seen before is I believe they're introducing like strategy cards in there. Yes. Yeah. I and love that. the way it was pitched to me, was just like in the same way, if I'm teaching someone a game, I'm going to feel bad if I don't tell them, kind of how they might want to play mm-hmm. and this is just a card so even from the beginning when everyone's new everyone can be like okay this is my own thing where it's like if i choose to i can see what the repercussions of going this path would look like through the whole game and follow that and yeah. already feel like i have a better context for the game as a whole totally i think it's really important for this game too because it's semi co-op in the fact that you're working together to keep atlantis going basically against the challenges it's facing but then there's also a winner and so you can't just trust your part what your like seatmate is saying like do this because yep. they're trying to win but then you also have to work 
you have to be doing well as a group in order to keep the game going. So I think the strategy card's a really important thing for this game. Yeah, I feel like we should look at doing that in some of our future games because totally. I think it's 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 really nice. Like I think a lot of times, like I've seen some games that have like they have strategy like built into the rules themselves, yeah. but it's so awkward and and a lot of times telling like what you're trying to do. If you're just like, oh, like, what should I do in this situation? And you got to consult a rule book. And everybody's going to wait for you. But I, I like that it puts it like right in front of you, like letting new players actually have a shot at like, totally, you know, making meaningful decisions in a game. So I think that's really smart. It, well, and it's usually like an overall strategy and like, like that you see in a rule book. Mm -hmm. And like, this would just be like, you're dealt almost a random one. This and is so viable. Like, here's oh. like one path you can take. Oh, really? Take. That's cool. Yeah. it's. I think it's very specific to, to like not overwhelm you. Yeah. It's like, oh, you want a bigger army and do well this way. Go this route. That's cool. Yeah, that's sweet. Yeah. So and with it being semi-cooperative, can everyone lose? I think everyone can lose, but only one person can win. Oh, wow. But that's don't quote thing. us on yeah. that. I'm, all I know is you're working together to keep the city going, and then the person that does the best at that wins. Got it. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. I'm excited to check this out. Yeah. We, do we back it? Yeah, we backed we it. We backed it. Yes. We we backed two of the three. I probably shouldn't say that. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. I'm not telling you which two, <laughs> except for you know one. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, next one is Role Player Adventures. So this game, of course, is something that probably is familiar to you because of Role Player being a very popular game. Um, but this is almost unique in the fact that it builds upon role player you can actually play with characters that you have from the game role player and then take them on oh, this cool. rpg setting adventure which i found super cool um it almost reminds me of when people use the game call to adventure to build their D, &D characters nice um, because they have alignment and a bunch of other things from that um but it's cruising it's already at 400 yeah grand. that was i was yeah. like man they're doing great still 16 days to go oh yeah they're they're killing it right now so i'm really excited for them um i have not played role player but i know a lot about either. it yeah. i feel like since we back crap <laughs> i just said we backed it so you know which ones we backed yeah, yeah uh no since we backed it i'm gonna have to get role player and play it before it comes so that we have a good idea of what's going yeah yeah, yeah so i did get a chance to play that last year nice um, and i had never heard of it someone just brought it to the table hmm. and then when I, I saw this one i was like this is amazing they've made a game that is a character creation game it's just like the best part of starting any video game yes yeah. Going through making your character. The best and, part? Oh, the best part. <laughs> I would Are just, you joking? No, I not. remember thinking being like, why have the rest of it? Just flesh this out. <laughs> You're joking, right? And no, well, I mean to some degree. I think they're really fun. Um, I do well, not. I mean, that's, that's honestly what role player is though. I Matt, like they've brought Matt. they've brought this to a board game to make a really fun player and then made a new game. To, like, bring those players on adventures. Max okay, spends wait. an hour working on an RPG character's nose in a video game. Everyone and, does. And no, Zach they, presses no, they, no, random, they random, no, random, they random, random until he gets into the game. Yeah. I don't want to I don't want to sit here, like, tweaking, like, how, like, this is why, like, I, like, I didn't, don't play Elder Scrolls online because it's just, like, I, I don't have time for that. I don't have time to make it, time. like, how big is his nose going to be? So you're going to like role player gonna, adventures yeah. and Max is going to love role player. So yeah, seriously, I'll, I'll build the characters for you. Okay. That's the best part. And I just don't understand, like if you have options to make someone customizable, you're going to spend time on it. They're, you're with them for the rest of the game. I'm, a, I'm how, a hybrid. How, how long is the game though? Does it matter? <laughs> Not for you. Apparently <laughs> I'm a hybrid. Yeah, I press I don't random. Get the really meat of it. I press random. So I get a base that I like, and then I customize from there. Whereas Max is fully custom, you're just I'm gonna start playing. Yeah, now. no, just give me give me a character and let's go. All right. Mm. So, what did you guys think about the map on this? Did it remind? Have you guys played Adventures in Middle Earth? Uh, it's the the no. Lord of the Rings semi RPG. It's not really an RPG. It's like a tactical um, mm -mm. simulator. This no. had a zoomed out map where you like went to different regions and you like flipped tiles, and that reminded me of like the core gameplay of Adventures in Middle Earth. But then I think in role player adventures, that's just like the story elements. And then you're like diving in and almost like doing like full like combat and RPG stuff. Mm. And then almost some like choose your own adventure type stuff, which was really cool. Yeah. No, I mean, for, for me, I like looked at this and I was like, I mean, we, we, uh, like the things that we play are like Dungeons and Dragons and then Gloomhaven. And so yep. it's, it kind of seemed like a nice like maybe in between between yep. those two is like a little bit more on rails than D&D. But um, had a little bit more of the structure of, totally. of Gloomhaven in there, which which I like. It's nice, and you don't need a DM, right? Yeah, no, there's and no that's, DM. That's, that's key. That's key. I like that. It's also nice in the fact that like 
in I feel like in Gloomhaven, there's almost no character. Cre- you get a character, yeah. they do stuff. You can upgrade them, yeah. but like you're not ever like creating the character. And to Max's point, this is a really good version yeah. of that. And that's why me. that's why Max thinks Gloomhaven is trash. He's like, yeah, the me character me. creation menu is the worst in Gloomhaven. <laughs> Speaking of Gloomhaven, we'd be remiss if we did not touch on Frosthaven at this point. Yeah. Now, obviously, it's not. We don't have a slide for it or anything. But oh my goodness. <laughs> I broke the record for Kickstarter. Funding. Dozens of dollars. It was dozens, almost dozens of people backed it. Yeah. Uh, really, really excited. We backed it. I was like, at first, we don't need this. We still have 80 scenarios in yeah, Gloomhaven to go. Because, well, we played like 20, 25. Yeah, which is like, like that. kind of a it's lot. It's a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. But with Frosthaven, I started seeing the whole, like, you're rebuilding this town mm-hmm. and you're finding loot and you're rebuilt, like, you're making things out of the loot. And it's like got a crafting system. And you know me, I love a good crafting system. You do love system. a good crafting system. It's true. We're going to yeah. make a crafting, you, 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 we're going to make a game someday. It's just going to be, you're, you make a character and then you just craft stuff. And, yeah. And there's that nothing, is my dream. there's nothing and interesting never about the play game it. at all. <laughs> and everyone hates it except for you two, you know? Yeah, I'm fine with that. <laughs> no, Let's no, make games I, I like we want to play. Crafting system. Um, I actually think that's a really nice improvement over um, yeah. over Gloomhaven in general. Yep. Um, because Gloomhaven, one of the greatest games of all time, in my opinion. Yes. But one of the things that I think maybe is a little clunky about it, which is like this tiny little knock, is at the end of every scenario, it's like, oh, how how can we like stretch this scenario out for a moment so we can just like get to the other end of the map without dying to get the, the one piece the of loot. We have to get that chest. Yeah, to get that chest. Yeah. And then it's and a trap you, and then we all die. If no, you don't uh, get the chest, it's like, what did we miss? Yeah. And then we go and look anyway because yeah, we're like, well, we yeah. can't go and we're not know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's the worst. But no, it seems like you get, you pick up different types of loot along the way and then you can make stuff, make stuff as you go, it. which is yeah. so cool. And I feel like you're way more invested in Frosthaven, the town, because you're helping to build it and like the locations or the stickers that you're adding are actually buildings in the town based mm-hmm. on your choices. I feel like that's something missing from Gloomhaven where like, yes, there's like the city prosperity track yep. uh, that, that helps you do things, but... Man, like whole whole other world when you're actually building the city. Reminiscent um, of some of our like favorite uh, yep. Assassin's Creed stuff. Oh yeah, uh, set, like which games? Black had Black Flag had the best one where you're like making your own island. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And I then you remember the your ships. Boat, yeah, the boat too. Yeah. I lo- yeah, I love those like that permanent upgrade, and then I imagine you, you start to get new scenarios. You start yep. to meet, you get new shops maybe, and things like that I as you upgrade so. the town. Yeah. Super cool mechanic. Uh, yeah. I can't wait. Are we gonna abandon our Gloomhaven campaign and just play no. Frosthaven? Yes. Yes. No. <laughs> well, another big like improvement was uh, in an actual scenario uh, before you'd kind of see the whole map before oh, like, yeah, when you're starting, right. mm-hmm. and they like they've moved it to different pages now. So like mm. you, as you unlock it, you're learning about it because everyone's gonna peek. You're gonna look in and and like see, have an idea of what's going on. Yeah. And some people I know even like just like we'll build the whole thing out mm-hmm. in the one in the beginning just to like have it there but this is like it adds to that mystery where it's like i do not know what's behind that door that's cool i like like, that yeah that's a i mean it's a big change i think that's really fun yeah it's it's super cool all right next big there's a lot of hot takes around this game all right terraforming mars (sighs) big box i'm stoked i guess we're back at then (laughs) well i i think we should i i remember like i feel like you are not hot on this or maybe it's you but like you you sent me the kickstarter link and i'm like on board for this like i want all my board games to be like 3d like this this is so cool i'm i am all about this my wife hears big box and says you're keeping that at zach's house (laughs) nice (laughs) which is true right gloomhaven's at your house yeah it is well ti4 is at your house but that's because that's yours i bought that for you really i bought it for me but it was for your birthday yeah you yeah it was a present to me for your birthday (laughs) that's that's great um no like the big box thing is just like oh it's so big it's so big all right so in my opinion and this is semi hot take terraforming terraforming mars is the one of the best games in the world with the absolute worst unboxing experience i Got it as a present from Zach a while ago, and I opened it up, and I was like, huh. <laughs> and I closed the lid, and I didn't play it for like six months, and then I played it at Zach's house, because Zach was like, dude, we need to play that. Yeah. It was your birthday present. Yeah. And I was like, dang, this game is amazing. Like, it's a really it great really good. game. And That's top 10 for me. Oh, yeah. No, it's top 10 for a lot of people. And, yeah. and I think that they, they heard that, 
and they made this incredible big box with incredible imp components with an incredible organizational yep. insert because really the base impressive. game doesn't have any of that. But it's so big that I wish there was an in-between. And they, they have the small they, box. They have like, like 10 different They like, have the small box on there. Yeah. But at first, they didn't have the add-ons only pledge level. It was either small box or big box, okay. and that was it. And I already have the base game, so it was like I don't need all of that. But now I'm thinking about going back. Well, you're probably going to trick it out, aren't you? You want the whole thing. Ah, there's so the many 3D, cool things in there. The 3D terrain is pretty the awesome. The 3D terrain is awesome. They've got like the metal tokens, which is, you know, you don't need it, but come on. Come on. It's great. You want it. You want yeah. it. You really Everybody want it. it. And they've got some like miniatures with it too. And I don't know. It fixes like everything about the game that like maybe was lacking before. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I'm like, I'm so excited about it. Yeah. And we haven't played with, is it the turmoil expansion uh, max that jump starts? Uh, I can't remember which expansion. We haven't played with that expansion. Mm -mm. Yet. But basically, everyone says it takes 20 minutes to, like, 40 minutes off of playtime, nice. which is my only complaint of the, that first time that we had played. Uh, yeah. So it was a little long, but we were learning. Long. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. I wasn't. What, is what, the, one that, the, the one that quick starts the game, yeah. basically? What is yeah. that one? I mean, is full it? disclosure, never played Terraforming Mars before. Have you not? Oh, uh, we got we to gotta do it. But now yeah, we, we, we should just have. wait wait till we get the 3D pieces. Yeah. I, like, I love the big box, though, because, like, I think every game should do this, where, like, for people that love the game... You can then just have this massive upgrade. Moonraker's like, big box. <laughs> yeah, not yet. It's gonna take a while. Yeah. I think we should transition into only big box games. <laughs> it's just the box, and then we just have little box games. I mean, we there's lots of it. companies that do that. It's a big box and a very small game inside, and it's just like slides around Splendor. in there. No, no, I'm saying yeah, Splendor. No. <laughs> hey, Splendor is a good insert, Max. Don't. I love Splendor. Splendor's insert. I, I think it's it's very well presented. Have you taken that insert out and put all the components back <laughs> in the box? Yes, I think it's wonderful. It's very and small. It's spacious. It, I, I love the spacious. The, other the, games. The, it's negative space, man. It, it like it it lets you appreciate the the pieces. When you read, it the, feels it very really elegant. Does. When you read the Moonraker's rule book, you will see Zach's appreciation for negative I, space. I mean, it it. I, I just want to. I want people's eyes to be pleased. Okay. Sure. Negative Makes space sense. gives you space to think. <laughs> okay. It gives, I just it, love it, your it, description. It, I mean, you like Gloomhaven. Yes. Not a lot of negative that, space. You can't fit that I, back into the box after you take it out. <laughs> no, I did it. I did it. That's because your this daughter way. jumps and dumps it, it down the top of it. Are, no, 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 no. Of that fact. Okay, yeah, you're right. That's fair. That's a fair point. Zach's three-year-old jumps on top of Gloomhaven she does. to close it. She's a big fan of jumping, and it's a very tall box. She jumps off of it. You know, who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? Um, but no, no, we, we, we treated it like a puzzle the other day, and we got it all in the box, all the pieces, and it closes. For the first it time. It can be done. Well, since it was shipped. Yes, since it was shipped, yes. Yeah. Cool. Well, those are our games that we're excited about. The end of that section. People hate on negative powerful space. Powerful ending. What a powerful ending. Let's talk about IV. We've got some updates. Uh... Yeah, three. Did you say three? I couldn't see your hands there. Uh, I got it backwards. Okay, yeah. To the camera. Oh, but that yeah. was was that IV or was I that three? V. Yeah. I understand IV now. IV is four. So and three updates. We do have three updates as well, I think. Yeah. Uh, we'll see if we get to four. Um, the biggest one that people probably care about is that Moonrakers is a game. Yeah. Why aren't you working on Moonrakers right now? We got a game to ship. I probably Why are you should messing be. around recording this show? Good point. I'm sorry, boss. Uh, so the good, great news is that Moonrakers is completely in mass production. Um, this is the last thing that we were waiting on. The wonderful plastic ships. I am stoked about them. Yeah, yeah they, they turned, turned out, out great. They turned out great. Um, one person on Facebook called them cute. And I... Yeah. We're going to pull that quote. Yeah. Oof. I said that Orange was very offended because... It does not like being called cute. Out of here making cute games. Yeah. Back to the drawing board. We're starting pull, over. Pull it out of mass production. We're going to have to put like the the skulls of our enemies on our ships. No more wow. cuteness. <laughs> anyway, these took the longest to get to mass production because of really just the backup that COVID caused um, in the, the production line of everybody. Um, and so these are in mass production and we will finish mass production in July and get these guys shipped. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah. Um, it's been, it's been a long time coming. Well, yeah. And it's been really yeah, fun to, for, to finally get the, the parts oh, yeah. in hand. You and, uh, you and Sam 
have been really hogging the parts. Oh yeah, no, I don't at, let you touch at them at your house. But I finally got one in my hands, like maybe just a week ago. And I think you only saw the metal shipped. Yeah, just today, today. like for the like first an time. hour ago. They look amazing. Thank um, you. But man, it, it, it like truly, it felt amazing. Like I I used to make games as a kid. They were terrible. Yeah. Um, with with my neighbor friend Tom and shout out to Tom. We would shout out to Tom Spazito. Hope you're good, man. Um, but no, I would like, we, we would like fantasize about like sending out our, our dream of making it was sending out a game to Hasbro mm. and they were going to make our game. I don't know why Hasbro. They made lots of games. Yeah. Really great games. Yeah. Monopoly. Yeah. We were just like, I don't know. They made Monopoly. They can probably make our game. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That, that was like really the moment to me that Moonrakers felt real was like, it's got the insert. I don't know the why insert. that was the thing it that it. took it to the next level for me and made it feel real. Um, but it really does. And I'm really stoked with the layout we made. Max, you, you modeled it. Um, the, the layout yeah, just of tailoring it. tailoring pieces to the box. It's just so fun. It is so fun. Like, yeah. I don't know what it is. I, I'm it's like creating a character in a game. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh no. Uh, shout out to Kung Fu Quickness on the Discord for the idea to put the symbols mm, embossed. Yes. Is it embossed or what's the, when it's indented? In, indented yeah. into the box or nope, the insert because it just made the organization of the box so much better. Yeah, yeah. So like, there's different slots for all the cards, yep. and now because of his idea, we've we've got icons that tell you how to organize the different cards, uh, card types yeah. in the box. So much better. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just like super proud of, of where we got to with the presentation. I can't wait for you all to, to, to get it in your hands because I'm, I'm really stoked about it. Excellent news. All of the cards, including the Kickstarter expansion, fit sleeved in the insert. And you probably already knew that because we've said it a bunch, but we still get asked if it's the case. And yes, they fit. Here's so. the question. Are you going to sleeve your own Moonrakers game? Um, no, because I have access to replacement parts. That's fair. Where most people do not. Max, you sleeping? It'd be the first game. I don't think it's going to happen. You also have access to replacement parts. So yeah, we're cards not, we're not sleevers here. I, I, I'd, I'd understand mm, if you never watch another show. Viewership just went down I from know. one to zero. Bye mom. You know, maybe I should. I like that your mom sleeves her games. <laughs> no, she does. Hardcore. It's actually, she Dawn doesn't, Harrison, she laminates. She loves sleeving those it's cards, not sleeve, man. They're laminated. Yeah, she sends them off. Yeah. No, she's got her own laminator at home, you crazy. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. All right. That's what's going on with Moonrakers. Yeah. But we actually have a second game. We did do. you know that? I, I, I did know that, actually. You did. Uh, it's very far along. It is very far along. We're yeah, we're like for almost while. done art. Almost done art. We're still making some gameplay changes, but for the most part, well, it is... you're making gameplay I, changes. Just, I mean... It can always be better, every, you know, right? Just trying to make it good for the people. So if you want to learn more about that game, you should, one, follow us on social media because we'll be starting to share and tease there very soon. But if you want the biggest scoop of all, the Discord actually plays this game a lot uh, and has been a huge part of playtesting it and making it great. Yeah. Um, and I was actually talking to one of the members yesterday and he was like, it's really wild to like go back and look at our first game of this because oh, yeah. it's just changed so, so much, much through playing on the Discord. It's been really um, fun to iterate on it. It's been really, really fun. Um, yeah, I remember that first game we played in that office. Oh my gosh, that it was really bad. early on. Yeah. It was so different. It was a completely different game. The weird yeah. thing is is that it was before COVID, and so we played in person with physical pieces, and I have not made a physical version of this game since that version, which is pretty wild. Yeah. It's all been Tabletop Simulator. Um but we're we're going into production on printing some stuff, so that's fun. Yeah, please come join us. You can you can play with us. You can play uh, play with our with our game. Yeah. Um, on Tabletop Simulator. Please so, come. Yeah. yeah. the The Discord is completely open. You can join it in a number of different ways. Uh, the Kickstarter page for Moonrakers has a link to the Discord page uh, that you can just click, or you can contact us on any social media platform, and we'll put it there. Also, we'll probably put a link to it in the YouTube comments or like the footer note, whatever called yep. just you know like and subscribe and hit the discord channel button. yeah get join us on there but no really you'd be able to get into a game tomorrow probably if you yeah. wanted to if you wanted to um, make it happen um yeah that's that's my iv games update zach you want to talk about iv in general yeah yeah so um just wanted to give you a little bit of uh insight into some of the things we've been working on on the animation side of things um we 
uh, as I said at the top of the show, like that is um, what Ivy Studio is is traditionally been doing uh, throughout our the history of, of the studios, commercial animation. Um, one of our dream clients has always been Nike um, and kind of right before uh, quarantine kind of all kicked off, yeah. we, we pitched on it and, and we won the job, uh, which was amazing. Uh, and then all of a sudden we're, you know, everybody's working from home and we're working on this yeah. kind of dream project with a really, really tight turnaround. Um, so it was, it was absolutely insane. Um, Max was technical directing on it and yeah, it was, it was a wild one, wasn't it? Oh man, that turnaround time was crazy. It, like, it, it, I remember it was. starting that first week and it's like first draft due this Friday. <laughs> let's, let's get it done. Yes. Um, it was, it was for a shoe release. There were, uh, three, three different shoes and four basketball players. Um, uh, so four videos total, uh, and there was a, a Air Force One, a Blazer, and um, uh, a mid, uh, Jordan One. These are highs, but uh, mid. Um, and, yeah, it's an absolute dream project. And we, we also um, did it in kind of a, a new technique that we've been um, working on here at the studio, uh, and that is this kind of new thing called real-time rendering. Um, we, we made a game uh, a few years ago called, a couple years ago now, called Bouncy Smash. It was kind of our first foray into interactive. Um, but we used a, a video game engine, obviously, to make the video game called Unity. Um, and, and over time, we've started to see the potential applications for uh, using video game engines for animation. And so uh, it has a number of benefits, uh, one of which, of course, is that you know video games run at 60 frames per second, whereas a lot of our videos that that we make especially with with really high fidelity graphics can take minutes or even hours to render a single image and so this allows for like really fast iteration um which is really helpful on a project like this with such a crazy crazy turnaround yeah so, yeah that you guys that's a hard thing to to pass up those rendered times yes yeah it's very nice but we made a little uh kind of uh recap recap yeah. and and kind of process video for you to kind of see uh, behind the scenes a little bit on uh, the Nike project. And if you're you're an audio only listener, uh, everything's fine. <laughs> if you're an audio only listener, uh, be sure to go check that out on YouTube. Uh, you can see the videos there. Um, yeah, I'm really bummed we didn't get any of the shoes. I tried to get the shoes, but they yeah, sold they out so fast. They went so, so fast, so quick. And I'm just. I feel like they should have sent you some. Taking some L's on the sneakers app. Ooh. I mean, I guess we can go on Goat and you yeah. know pay. Pay a whole bunch of money to get them. I didn't understand any of what you just said. Really? Nope. Mm. I'm wearing not cool sneakers. Yeah, some, got some boost. The boosts. What are you wearing? What are you wearing, Max? No shoes right now. Mm. Oh yeah, you're home. Lucky dog. That's nice. Um yeah. But yeah, uh, that's that's been one of our kind of most recent projects. We finished that up uh, a few weeks ago, and yeah. and we'll keep you in the loop moving forward on some of the the projects that we're working on. Well, that's the end of our show this week. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, once again, if you know of anyone that you would like to see as a guest on our show, we'd love to have them, so please let us know. And then also, if you played any games during quarantine that we did not, please let us know because we'd love to play them. Yeah. I'm always looking for new games to play. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to, to get some other people talking on our show other than just me. That'd be great. Yeah. And also talk to us on the Discord, please. You can talk to us there. Yeah, talk to us there. So yeah, that's it. That's our show. Yeah, and please um, unironically smash that like and subscribe. Or ironically, we don't care. Yeah, as long as you do it. You That's can do true. it in whatever form you would like. 
I like I like ironically subscribing to things. I do you use a fake email address when you do that? No. But then that's it, so much work. It is a lot of work. I don't spend a lot of time on YouTube. Okay, thanks, guys. <laughs> Bye, guys.